All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Yes, Harold Lamore, 101169. All right, Harold, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Renata and Ms. Jackson will be your panel. Have a revocation hearing today. I'll ask you some charges. You'll be guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement or not guilty with a statement. We'll talk to you and then we'll uh, make a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Have your sister Rebecca Jackson here at the appropriate time. She can make a brief comment. Harold Rumar, DOC number 101169. Uh, can you read and write? Yes, sir. And is there a parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Yes, sir. That's your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Harold Rumar, rule number eight. On 328-2022, you were released on good time parole. You failed to attend sex offender counseling for the months of April through October 2022, an administrative jail sanction was completed in July 2022, and the following, the following year release, you continued non compliance with sex offender treatment. You enrolled in sex offender counseling in November 2022 and failed to attend the scheduled session. How do you plead? Sir, I plead guilty with the statement, please. Okay, and then number 10, you failed to make any payment towards your supervision fees of $504. How do you plead? Guilty. Okay, go ahead and give me your statement on the first one. What's the deal? Uh, I was I was released on the 29th of March, which is the beginning of April. I was told to, in, to enroll in classes in the month of May. I think it was around the mid-month. I went and enrolled in the first part of the class for orientation. The orientation was $400. I gave $200. They done the orientation. In July, I, missed, I lost my father. When I first got out on parole, Mr. Uh, Cole was my officer, and he told me at that time, I'm a carpenter by trade. I've been doing carpentry work for 27 years, that I was not allowed to go into any residence where someone lived at to do work because of my secondary registry. That, so if there was a residence that lived there, I wasn't allowed to work. That, like, that was a stone. I mean, that was all my work, really. I work for a man that does a uh, cabinet. He uh he does get called to work with me to do when I'm allowed to do it. I do that. If there's no residents that live at that residence, other than that, I'm, I'm restricted. Uh I went to uh, my father lost my father in July. I spoke to Mr. Cole. He knew about this. In August, I was arrested. I explained to him I was financially unable to pay. Uh, I got out in August after a 10-day sanction. I had eye surgery done. I was out of work for almost six weeks. I think the doctor's reports was in LDL's office. My parole officer had those reports also. I saw I was out of work, and then when I did go back to work, I made $420 for like three days worth of work. I had kind of had some medical issues happening. They think I might have uh, COVID cancer. Things just ain't been right for me. I just couldn't financially afford what they were doing. The day they arrested me, they advised me that they have a program that would help me pay for these classes if I couldn't afford to pay for them. But yet they never offered this to me at any time. So what you going to do about your, you? I mean, you're only a carpenter. You have any more skills? What else can you do to make yeah. money to not be in, uh, in that situation? I, I mean, you know, sex offender... Stipulations or your sex offender stipulations. I mean, that's that's on you. You know, I mean, that's that, that's what happened when you commit a sex uh, crime. My sister advised me that if she didn't know these things, she'd have tried to help me if she could. She didn't just go back to work. She was the one caring for my father, so she wasn't able to help me at that time. I did ask because I didn't want that burden put on Bill. Uh, I do have work. I spoke to the, uh, Mr. Chapman. And he did advise me that he had some work for me. There's another man that, that does work with him that called him and asked him if, when I was getting out because he was ready to start building his house in March. That's probably about six, seven months worth of work. He's got some other work that was put off until after the first of the year, after the holiday, that I'm able to do. It's just that in the time that this was going on after my release in August, I think we lost the audio. Yeah, we lost the audio. All right, now that's good. Thank you. We'll hear from Miss uh, Miss Rebecca. You'd like to make a statement? Let Miss Rebecca make a statement. 
Yeah, you're on mute. Yeah, I can you're hear on you. mute right now. Take yourself off of mute. Oh, I'm sorry. I hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. I'd like to make a statement on his on his behalf. Um, I know about his charges. And like you said, that is his charges. You got to deal with what you got to deal with. But he was under medical care. He was under um, doctor's su supervision. I have lost my dad in July. I'm taking care of him, but I'm willing to help my brother do whatever he has to do fully. He's able to do what he can do for himself financially. Um, I do it. I help him the best I can. Um, he's okay. a hard worker. He was under doctor's care. He, he might have cancer. Um, that's a lot because that's what my father just died of in July. And I took care of him for two years. And it's a very traumatic scenery and mental thing to handle. Okay, thank you. But he's a really good guy and he's a hard worker. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, would you like to make a statement on your behalf anymore, Mr. Rumor? Yes, sir. I ask that y'all please give me this opportunity. I mean, I do have work to go do now. The holidays are over. I just spoke right. to the gentleman yesterday, and I'd appreciate y'all giving me this opportunity. Give me 90 days. I don't, I don't, I don't I do. I, sounds good. I'm ready. I'm ready to vote. I'm ready. Hard enough. Oh, listen. Uh, you're you're right. Your sex offense is your sex offense. I understand the situation that you're in. Um, so you know, if you can't fix that, then you're going to be right back in here, and then you're going to stay in jail for a long time. So I'm today just for me. I'm going to do not revoke you, return you supervision, make you get you uh, your your a carpentry job where you're not around small children or not in the house where there are children and. Uh, you can do that and, and follow your orders with your uh, parole officer. You can stay out of you. If you don't, we'll see you again and you just stay in jail next time you're in front of me. That's my vote for today. Okay. Likewise, do not revoke supervision. All right, Miss. Uh, we're not. My vote also is the same. Do not revoke supervision. All right, three votes to do not revoke. Your Good luck to you. You need to get all that taken care of. This is your last chance. Yes, if not, we will stay in jail. Good luck.